Um, and also, yeah, when you've got so much stubble coming down into a narrow spot, like your air off the fan has got to go somewhere. And so it's just trying to, it just goes wherever it can get out the easiest. And um, often we'll, that's where we have a lot, like our, um, often our weeds will be down the wheel track, just outside of the um, narrow windrow. Um, and not enough, of course, not a constant trail. We tried it on our chickpeas last year, but it didn't work. Um, just, it was, was not a, a big enough row. Um, challenges different crops. And um, I don't know whether you can see, there is a buzzer uh, oh yeah, just there, and that spot, and then over here, we had some bad um, grass. And so we just sprayed it with Roundup. So we just, we do what we've got to do, basically stop seed set however we can. And um, last year in this paddock, we've got um, uh, rye grass over here, and that was brought in from uh, the header. And that's something we learnt the hard way. Um, and we were out chipping for a couple of weeks, so a few of us, you know. So just do, we just try and do whatever we can just to uh, buy us time and stop the seed set. So I just sort of run through, and it sort of runs a bit contrary probably to what some are saying, but for us, um, direct heading canola, we just, it's not a practical option for us to go so low to get that rye grass. It just clogs up the header and our seed, our admits just goes right up and yeah, obviously we get docked. So we, um, hence why our crop topping is a really good option in the canola. Um, we really love it actually. Um, chickpeas and favours it's been talked about, they're good options because um, you don't have to go low just for that operation um, and just trying to get that um, stubble load high enough so you can actually, actually burn it. Um, and wheat and barley, we, we like them as an option, but obviously not in a real big year if it's really high. So um, it's just trying to, trying to work around the circumstances that have been given to you, really. Um, and linseed, it is, a, it is a pretty good option too. It's, um, you're pretty low with it, um, but the stalk can be a bit of an issue with that stuff. So it's, it's got its own um, problems. Um, tips, that's our, um, that's our big old girl up at Westmar, and um, we just rigged that up one afternoon. A um, bit challenging with the setup on that, but, um, and it works quite well, yeah, but you can't stop, otherwise it will block, hence um, we uh, bent some walkers here. Yeah. Um, selecting the paddock, oh, I'm not advocating, uh, certainly in our area or from our place, doing everything. Um, it's really just selecting the paddock that's got the pressure. Try and um, you know work out your um, crop type to best fit your operation as far as weed control with in crop and harvest control. Um, so it's a, it's got to be a big picture program, I think. Um, and yeah, just basically when we've identified a paddock that we're going to do, we'll just try and leave it to last if we can. Um, the longer we can leave it, let it dry down, just it makes it so much better when we actually um, get there. And yeah, just get a contractor in, you know, it is slow, it is painful sometimes. Um, but just try and line up, have a bit of foresight. If you know you're going to be doing half your country and you think it's going to halve your speed, just, you know, make the call early and uh, try and try and get some help. Um, one of the big issues we faced is, yeah, if the windrow is too big, we, um, every head is a bit different with their management systems. At the back we have a New Holland, um, we actually, just coming out the back it was just about blocking up, it was hitting the back of the chopper and it was going to be real nasty, so we actually turned the fins around on the chopper and just blasted it down onto the windrow. And um, so we chopped it up real fine and just basically, it, instead of the wind ray perhaps being up to my waist, it was probably below my knees. Um, the same amount of straw, but just being through the chopper, it just really packed it like a brick. And so that, that, was, um, that was certainly an option and it worked well for us. And that's another reason why we, we did burn in very hot conditions, because we'd heard from the south that they had trouble. I think it was mentioned if it's not enough air gets in, we won't be killing those weeds. So we thought, let's go hot, get a permit, 
and uh, it did an excellent job, really good job. So, um, and about 700 mils where we're at. Uh, some some people maybe might be a lot narrower, but we just run into too many troubles going too narrow. Um, yeah, the wider the better, but you want it narrower the better. So it's sort of a compromise. Um, and yeah, GRDC done a publication just last one on their supplement of the minimum stubble loads and costings. Um, and yeah, I, I would be interested, I, I just wonder whether um, perhaps our greener straws and that at times might, yeah, might blow the cost a little bit higher than perhaps what they're suggesting, but it would be interesting to see. And um, certainly we're not um, seeing no wind row burning. We're not planning to be doing it in 10 years. Um, it does have its fit, but um, we'd like to be probably going down the seed destructor or uh, that sort of way. Even the uh, tram lining might be a good intermission as been mentioned. So that's really, we are faced with a problem and it was the easiest way of making something happen quickly. And um, it certainly gives you a good idea of what you can and can't do for perhaps these other operations. Um, whether it be your, your tram lining or the seed destructor, as I said at the start, you've still got to get it in the front. So it's still, if you've got to go low for narrow wind road burning, you're going to have to go low for these other operations. So your green straw, all these other issues, you know, seeds, uh, how clean your seed is, you know, it all has a part to play. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> didn't get out of it that easy. Uh, sounds like you've done a good job um, with your effectiveness. You touched on um, the fact that yeah, once we get these wheat seeds in, um, the type of system for destructing them may not be quite so critical. They're all fairly effective. Um, so the young in work focusing on getting those wheat seeds into the front, maybe around lots of wind rowing, um, cereals early to make sure we're capturing those wheat seeds that would be um, you know, yeah. shedding um, early. You don't need work around that or thinking about that point then? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't uh, personally, but uh, someone here might know there is there has been work done in our area of that. Um, black oats are a bit of an issue, shedding very early, and um, often 10 days or six days ahead of where you would is not, it's still too late. Yeah, but th it does help, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Right, now, uh, oh. uh, 2016. Yeah. Uh, New Holland has we got people to try to fix these because they dropped them off after about an hour and <laughs> had the fires were worse. Yep. Have you had any experience with that? And is it peculiar to yellow headers or is that yeah. I know it's a bad year for it, but is it is it fact or fiction that, that it's, um, that's the case? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, no, we haven't really. We, we did have fires, but it didn't seem any worse than anyone else. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, I can say we did actually keep the chopper going um, for that reason. Um, just trying to blow, get airflow through with the New Hollands. They drop it out in front of the chopper on your sieves and then you, the straw goes through your chopper. And so by blocking that chute, your air's really got limited space to go. So we, we just kept the chopper going and trying to really blow just air away to get it away from there. So whether that's helped, I don't know. Good point, Rob, because uh, last time we had a lot of trouble with growers, this single chaff lines, like Michael mentioned in his talk, so not the chaff decks, but the single chaff lines, a lot of uh, dust in the engine bay, so it was causing uh, the build-up, whereas the chaff decks, we were sort of getting that positive displacement of 
chart away from the, the back of the head. It's just an observation. Only in last year, the two previous years, we didn't see it. So. Was it more a frost effect last year? A bit more chaff, a bit more dust from frosted Hanging crops, around, possibly? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Brad. Well done.